President, uh, gentlemen, this thing that has been going back and forth through the email for a number of weeks have changed significantly. Um, and even some of what you said there in the summary, uh, I'll see here, as it's still called, um, here is still called a financial stability agreement, but you did indicate for the purpose of law, it is a consent agreement? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and so, because I didn't see it here, that, that at one point there were about seven or eight different public acts in this document. Many of those, at least in what we got today, that has been lifted out of here. So this, what we have before us right now, is subject to PA4. Yes, it is. Okay. I want to be clear and on that. If I could, just to follow up on that, and, it, and it's subject to PA4 in two material provisions. One is in the budget, uh, the preparation of the budget, if there's a violation of it. And that's in section 19, I think it's B, of, uh, of the uh, PA4. And the second one is in the collective bargaining. So there's, it's, in the, it's a limited exception. It's not subject to all PA4. Under PA4, um, the treasurer can only um, put in the PA4 document those, those issues that are agreed upon in the consent agreement. That's the reason for the consent agreement. And, and is it also still subject to the Urban Corporation Act of 1967? Yes, it is. <laughs> Um, as quick as I can, Mr. President. First of all, I've um, stated all along to, to you and to um, the Deputy Mayor and to uh, Chris Brown that I don't support any aspect of PA4 through the front door or the back door. Uh, I don't support it. Uh, I think that it did come about as unconstitutional, but even inside of P4, the law has been violated. Uh, it suggested that the people had a right of appeal to P4. The people have appealed that through over 200,000 uh, signatures. So then what we have before us come through the back door, through the Urban Cooperation Act, and by the way, Mr. President, this is still subject to the Urban Corporation Act of 1965, a public hearing of the people must be called before a vote of this body is to take place as well, subject to uh, Section 5, <coughs> Section 5B, number 3 of the Urban Corporation Act. So before we vote, there must be a full-fledged uh, hearing of the people with everything laid out and the people and their attorneys have a right to go through this as well. What's, what's that section? Uh, it is uh, PA 7, okay. Section 5, B, number 3. Okay. One public hearing must be called in order before a majority vote of this body. Okay. I assume we all read that. Um, I hear what you're saying in terms of the uh, city council and the mayor maintaining their, um, their authority. What it actually says is that the mayor and city council shall continue to exercise all such powers, privilege, and authorities are granted to each under the charter and applicable laws. The mayor and city council each have determined, I don't know which of us have determined, in its exercise of their discretion and the furtherance of the joint exercise of power and cooperation undertaken detailed in this agreement to refrain from their respective exercise of their power. So yeah, you have the power, but you agree by approving this to refrain from the use of your power. I think the word you use, uh, Councilmember Brown, yesterday is creative language. There's a lot of creative language in here. I, I think that um, it usurps the right of council in its bargaining rights going forward. Uh, it says that we're not subject to, which means you don't have to bargain with your bargaining units anymore. We'll bargain with them for you. Um, it also says that since we have not agreed upon the TAs that you also diligently 
worked on and the union members in this room diligently worked on that once we approve this, then those TAs basically are null and void. Am I correct? Basically it says, yeah, I can read it. Yeah, I, I think the um, I think what I would suggest is that the, the TAs are still um, they're not null and void. The the issue would be whether the TAs are consistent with this agreement. So if they're inconsistent with this agreement, then, then yes, there would be a conflict that had to be resolved. It basically says we shall not propose, yeah. approve, or agree to anything that does not already exist. Mm -hmm. And those TAs don't exist yet because this body has not approved it. That'd be correct. And so basically, they null and void. Um, there's a lot more here, and, and of course they just start sending stuff today. Annexes A, B, C, D, and E. Um, but it, it, it clearly states that once we approve this, then everything in here is also approved. Uh, the council gives its approval to the entire body. However, from time to time, we will submit something to you. You may look at it and... Um, and pretty much that's basically it. I, I uh, my, my couple last question, is this what you're presenting to us? Is this what the mayor has signed off on? The mayor has not signed off on this. We are presenting this to you for discussion. Okay, so it has not, so, so this is not a document that's being presented to us from the administration. This is coming from the state. Correct with no agreement from the administration. We're not 100% behind this document. We, we thought that it was important that we start to bring this to the table for discussion. Well, I, I agree. I agree. It should have been brought, as you, as you know, I've said a long time ago, because right. a lot of this has changed. But if it's not a document, a solid document that's saying, this is what we agree to, we buy into this, rather than you saying we're still working on this ourselves. Well, I would say that this document is close. There's certain things in it that we have issues with that we need to address. Right. But uh, I would say that it's probably close enough for discussion. All right. Uh, well, Mr. President, again, I, I don't support any aspect of it. I think that we're supposed to live in a democracy, Malcolm called it, of disguised hypocrisy. And I think that we make that true when we participate in something that the people have said, not just the people of the city of Detroit. Those 200,000 signatures didn't come from the city of Detroit mostly. They came from all over the state of Michigan. And the people have said, we want to repeal this. And what we are saying is, well, before you repeal it, and the, num and the signatures are being counted as we sit here, before you repeal it, we're going to go with them through the back door and approve something that the Urban Corporation Act will tie us to, even if Public Act 4 go away, um, Public Act 7 ties us to this. Am I correct? Yes. Correct? Yes. Correct. So 